The story begins with people working with food in a course that teaches cooking skills. A man named Matsuoka inspects his students. He tells a woman to be careful with the salt. If she adds any more, it will be too salty. Then he instructs them how to chop onions. We see one man watching from the back as opposed to the others. When EDS the students turn to chop the onions, we watch how the distant man, Toshiro, chops his. Matsuoka watches him too and tells Toshiro he doesn't need to keep going. He shouldn't chop the onion too fine, but he keeps chopping regardless, choosing to ignore the instructor's advice for some reason. Soon Tashiro is frying the onions while staring into space. He regains awareness once Matsuoka stands nearby. The onions are slightly overdone, says the instructor. Tashiro asks if he can hear a chime. It is like a scream, and he thinks it's a message for him. He wonders what it is saying. Matsuoka can't hear it. As he walks away, Tashiro runs to him to say he's not there to learn cooking skills. He merely wants a distraction. The man stresses he wrote it on the application form. At the end of the session, Matsuoka cleans his working area. He stops for an unknown reason and takes his time to turn around. The scene cuts at this curious moment. In the hallway, two women rush to him. One of them says Tashiro asked for Matsuoka's address. However, they didn't give it to him. The other woman says Tashiro is rather odd to which Matsuoka replies he takes things too far. She thinks Tashiro says strange things. When Matsuoka exits the building, something stops him. He turns around to slowly walk toward whatever he hears or feels. We see the space he looks at, and there is nothing unusual present. Later, he sits in a restaurant with a man, telling him he has confidence in his sense of taste. He explains how he had a sharp palate at an early age. He already prepared several sophisticated dishes during his time in elementary school. This amazes the man with him. Matsuoka says, if it's about giving customers what they want, he is the man for the job. The man who seems to be interviewing him asks if Matsuoka works for them. Will he continue to teach? He will give it up, says Matsuoka. What interests the interviewer is that in the chef's last interview, he said he took pride in his work. Matsuoka doesn't know why he said that. He does not know what possessed him. Then we see him teaching again. Tashiro continues to be distant from everyone. He just stabs the material they are given to work with, rather than following Matsuoka's instructions. This prompts Matsuoka to tell the man to cut it gently. Tashiro gives him an eerie look before he tosses the knife to the side. He asks if the instructor knows that half of the former's brain has been replaced. The scar from the surgery is gone now. A machine exists in his head. It is there to control him, and it responds to the chime. Tashiro says half of his brain is still okay, meaning his mind is rational. Matsuoka comments briefly on this strange revelation and walks away. Tashiro loudly says the instructor doesn't believe him. Thus he quickly walks toward Matsuoka, making the latter walk away with equal speed. Once they stop, Tashiro says he will show Matsuoka the machine inside his brain. He places a knife inside his head and falls to his... Of course, everyone panics. Subsequently, a man talks to the two women in the hallway. He asks if they noticed anything odd about Tashiro today. One of them says they did not. But she says Tashiro is a very odd person. The man is curious to know what she means. He kept saying he could hear something in his head, she replies. Moving along, we see Matsuoka in his room, looking out the window. The man we just saw enters the room and says he is Detective Atsuki. He wants to ask Matsuoka a few questions. First, he asks if anything like the recent incident happened in the past. He gets told it never did. Second, Atsuki asks if anyone has ever become enraged or overwhelmed with sadness while cooking. Matsuoka says the reverse of that is what usually happen. People come there to calm their negative emotions. The detective wants to know if this is true for the chef, and the chef says it is. With that, Atsuki leaves. Then Matsuoka arrives home to his wife. He tells her he thinks the job interview went well today. Things are looking up, he adds. We watch the family eat dinner for a short time. In his class, Matsuoka teaches a young lady how to cut a chicken. She looks at him with unease, asking if she has to do this. He says she does. As she is cutting it, she suddenly puts the knife down and says she can't do it. She complains about the chicken being squishy. Matsuoka decides she should skip this lesson. The lady doesn't understand why he made her go through it. Lifting the chicken, she says she could understand if it was alive. She drops it before she says coming in at this stage is weird. It wasn't enough for her to have shown the attitude she did. So she angrily tosses the chicken to the side. Its wings are like hand, she says. She also says it has no head. It sounds like she is complaining about everything she can. The lady leans forward and says the chicken is starting to look human. At this point, Matsuoka perfunctorily stabs her with a knife. She starts to move away in fear, but he follows her. He catches the lady to stab her again. 
She falls, attempting to crawl away with whatever life she has left. Alas, her instructor takes the last amount of it away. Afterward, he puts her corpse in a bag and carries it to his car. Later, we see him leaving a wooded area with a shovel. It is implied he buried the young lady. The assassin walks for some time until he starts to run. The next day, he is inside his building, where a woman tells him the detective is there. She says the student named Aikmi has been reported missing. Matsuoka acts like he's surprised to hear this. At this moment, another woman rushes down the stairs to say Aikmi is in his room. She adds that Aikmi has been waiting for him and urges the man to go there. Once they are in the room, the woman points to where Aikmi is. What she points to though, is an empty chair. Its emptiness surprises her, making the woman say she is gone. She sounds certain. She saw Aikmi sitting in the chair. Soon she starts to scream for an unknown reason and runs away. Matsuoka hears a dragging sound, but we don't know if he sees something. He becomes filled with fear, which causes him to rush out of the room like the woman did. When he is about to exit the building, something seems to stop him. He goes to look at a big mirror on the wall. Then he walks away outside and finds Detective Atsuki, who tells him Aikmi's parents are worried about her. He is checking the places she might have visited. Before Matsuoka leaves, he gets asked what is on his hand. The chef answers he cut him. As he walks away, Atsuki watches him. The next scene shows Matsuoka at a restaurant, being interviewed again. He says he won't end his teaching days. This time he has two interviewers, whom he tells he had lots of opportunities in the past. Yet he was too busy, so he let them pass him by. He stresses he won't let that happen anymore. If they need him, he says he will be there. The main interviewer stops him and says all Matsuoka has done is talk about himself. He wants to know about what he calls Bistro Enville. That is why they are there. Matsuoka says he would continue their current direction, prompting the interviewer to ask what he thinks that is. Thus Matsuoka says what he thinks. The interviewer asks how would employing him as their head chef benefit them. Matsuoka starts to say it is hard for him to explain his qualities in words. But the man instantly stops him to repeat that all Matsuoka has done is talk about himself. He tells the chef not to take offense because he thinks he should continue to teach. Matsuoka tries to shake the interviewer's hand. However, insult gets added to injury. For the interviewers just walk away. Out of nowhere, we see a man attempting to bring harm to a woman in the background. Thankfully, he gets brought down by a few people. At home, Matsuoka sits on the couch, reading a newspaper. His son approaches him to ask if he can borrow money. He says his friend started a company and wants him to invest in it. The company is under construction which the son wants 200,000 yen for. Matsuoka is shocked to hear such a huge amount being requested. He tells his son that a good friend would not ask him to invest that much money. Therefore, the boy walks away, telling his father to forget it. Matsuoka stands to look at a knife in the kitchen. Then he opens the door to his son's room and sees the boy sitting there with headphones on. He turns around to look at his dad with a smile. Moving along, Matsuoka goes to another room, where he sees a mask. A ring sounds at the door making him look at the intercom to see something indecipherable. He turns the device off perhaps due to being unsettled by it. Sitting at a table, the man seems distressed. He starts to lose his mind. The ring at the door repeats, and he opens it to find no one there. So he walks onto the road to see if anyone is there. Yet whichever direction he looks in, he can't see anyone. Matsuoka seems to go back to a dark, empty home. It could be implied that a horror happened inside that never gets revealed. The film concludes with us zooming away from his front door.